Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. It is so greatly appreciated to those that subscribe, you comment, and respond. Today, we're going to look at the title of a video called Revealing Satan's Ministers of Righteousness, Dines de Souza. Now, this video is being made because of what I have observed of this gentleman and know what he promotes and what he stands for when it comes to, quote, his religion. Now, this person, and you can look him up. In fact, I'll give you the spelling of his name. His first name is Dinesh, D-I-N-E-S-H. His last name is D'Souza, D-apostrophe-S-O-U-Z-A. He is of Indian descent, very well known in social media circles, has a very successful podcast, has been on like Fox News uh, many, many times, has traveled the country, if not the world, doing speeches at universities and seminars alike. He has been involved in many, many, many debates on many, many topics. But this has to do with his religion. Now, he's very well-schooled, very well-spoken, uh, is one that can really use fancy speech to get across what he's trying to say, and he uses very, very big words, some of them that I can't even pronounce, nor would I try to, or even spell. But nonetheless, this man has to be exposed for what he really is. And he was doing a video, and I urge you to look them up. They are on his YouTube a podcast channel. You can find him on YouTube and many other places, I'm sure. But he was doing about Dante, who was a um, Italian philosopher, poet, in the early centuries, like the 12th or 13th century. And he was defending Dante's religious writings. And what caught my eye was the first uh, one I watched on this series that he has out there, on something called, uh, we should read the Bible literally and allegorically. And then he went on to defend why that is. And as I started listening to him, I started getting some very, very, uh, if you will, spiritual insight to what he was presenting. And I listened to him, and I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. But as I listened, he was pushing a certain narrative. He was talking about something called purgatory that Dante writes about and is something that Dinesh Souza believes in. Well, that right away brought me to a conclusion that this man is probably of Catholicism. And he does, by the way, uh, identify as a Christian in the realm of Christianity as a practicing Catholic. You can look that up also. But he also calls himself an apologetics, or apologist, I should say, coming from the word of apologetics. And that is a word that's found mostly in Catholicism, but it's found a lot in the realm of Christianity, where people go around defending, if you will, their beliefs in Christianity and why it is true. They are debaters, they are arguers, they are staunch supporters of what it is they believe. And he is one of them. And that's what he's doing with this uh, presentation, I'm sure. But he goes through all these things and the historical aspects of it and what it means. And I urge it, if you want to listen to him, you sure can, but have an open mind and have your Bible open. And I actually listened to a few comments from people. And I was surprised to find several people that disagreed or did, did not go along with what this man was saying. So I put in quite a lengthy uh, response myself. Uh, warning people about this man. I make no no bones about it. I don't hide any punches when I'm out there to give the word of God in truth. It, being a nice guy is no longer an option in my book. Anyway, that's when I decided to expose this man and maybe end up doing a series of the ministers of righteousness of Satan that need to be exposed. Now, getting into this, let's look at the word allegory. You know, first of all, there is in the book of uh, 
the Bible, the 1611 King James Bible, there is 66 books. Now, probably in Dines de Souza's book, he has 73, which is probably from a Catholic Bible. Nonetheless, there is approximately 31,102 verses within this book of 66 books. There's approximately 788,280 words in this Bible, which comprises of over approximately 3,116,000 480 letters to make up characters or words within this Bible. Now, why am I saying this? Well, the reason I'm saying this is to prove a point. In all of these books, the 66 books, all of the verses, these 31,102 verses, and all of the words are the letters that make up words of over 3,116,420. Allegory comes up one time in scripture. Now, Dines de Souza is telling everybody you must read the whole Bible from both a literal sense as to what it says and an allegorical sense, what they think it means. See, that's what he's promoting. Now, the word allegory, let's look at that first. It appears one time in scripture and you're going to find it very interesting where it's found. But the word allegory, in the Greek, it's pronounced allegora e o. Allegora o. It's spelled A L L E G R O R E O. It is to be an allegory. It is a meaning of a word in itself. It's derived from the Greek word elos, which means it has can be used in many different applications. So it's a word that can be used. In many different senses. Now, mankind has told you that it can be told as a story, as an allegory. Now, this word is only found one time in Scripture. And I totally agree that you should read the Bible, and I do read the Bible, and I take it literally. I leave the allegorical stuff out because that's mankind's way of telling you. Unless the Bible gives you permission to do so, Dines de Souza. And there's only one place in this whole Bible out of the 31,102 verses that this verse even comes up. Or this word comes up in a verse. And let's open your Bible, shall we? Let's open it up to the book of Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. And Galatians, of course, is found in the New Testament under the writings of Paul the Apostle in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is a doctrine for the body of Christ church, which is, excludes religion, which excludes Christianity. Yet you find this word allegory. And I'm going to read it to you so you understand. This is the only place in the 31,102 verses that God actually gives you reference and gives you permission to look at what was written as an allegory only. It stops right here. It's never meant to be any place else because God never put it there. It's not to be made any place before that or after that. It stays right where it is written. And it is found in the book of Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start in uh, chapter 4. And it's the uh, Paul's writing to give you an example of law and grace. And he's going to tell you this. And we're going to start in verse 21. Keep this in mind. He is telling you the difference between being under the law in times past and being under the grace, which is the but now of the cross. Let's start in verse 21. He's telling his people, tell me you desire to be under the law? Do you not hear the law? Verse 22, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Verse 23, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was after the promises. Verse 24, which things are an allegory, for those are the two covenants. Ah, God is giving us an example. He's giving us an allegory that we can use that these two stories present the law and grace. That's all he's doing. And that's the only place he's ever going to do it in all of this Bible. The one from the Mount Sinai, which was under bondage, which is Hagar, the bondwoman of Abraham, that bore the son, Ishmael. 
Verse 25, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and it answers to Jerusalem, which is now is, and is under bondage with her children. In other words, it's under the law of God, of Moses, of the Ten Commandments, the 426 civil laws in Leviticus, the seven ceremonial laws, and the Ten Moral Commandments. That is the nation of Israel under bondage. But verse, look at verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. The Jerusalem above now, which is in heaven, which is the mother of us all. Verse 27, for it is written, Rejoice thou, barren woman, that thou bearest not, break forth, and cry, that thou travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Verse 28, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Verse 29, but as then he that was born under the flesh, which was Ishmael, which persecuted Isaac, was after the flesh persecuted him that was after the spirit, or born of the promise, even as it is now. Verse 30, nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heirs with the son of the free woman. Verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. That's the only allegory. And he's talking about law and grace here, ladies and gentlemen. That's all he's ever talked about. I mean, that is found where? In the doctrine for the body of Christ church, in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ from Romans to Philemon, which is the salvation for us today under the but now the cross, which is grace. The bondwoman no longer exists. They will not be partakers with the ones born of the free woman under grace. That's the allegory that the only allegory that we could ever use in scripture, the very only one. So don't even try to go allegorically speaking anywhere else in Scripture, to include the book of Revelation, which, by the way, Christianity, mankind, and ministers of righteousness of Satan, like Dinesh D'Souza, teach you, you should do from verse 1 of Genesis all the way through chapter 22, verse 21 of Revelation. And again, he doesn't stop there. He is a debater of the Word of God. He is an apologetic, apologist. He believes in apologetics, which is a man-made Entity, a man-made word that does not even show up in the 31,102 verses of Scripture. In fact, it's not even a, a word that's made up using 3,116,480 letters to make up the word apologetics or an apologist. It doesn't exist in Scripture. Why is it forbidden of God? Well, you have to find that in 1 Corinthians. Again, written word, under grace, not under the law. And he talks about this in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where they had a lot of debate going on about who should follow who. And he says this in verse 29, that thou no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh should glory in the presence of God. Verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us as wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You debate the Word of God. You're an apologetics, apologist. You are going against the very Word of God. You are using allegorical readings to self-interpret, mind you, or self-understand. And he believes what it is Dante has taught down since the ages, since the 13th century, about something called allegorical reading of the Bible and understanding it in two ways. So you understand it, first of all, literally. And he makes a good point about literary, about it being literal. But he also gets into the application of it, allegorically reading it, putting it in a perspective, looking at what, it, what the words represent. It isn't only literally what the words mean, but it's what the words represent, see. That's where allegorical study comes into play. That is mankind putting his finite mind and finite wisdom into Scripture where the Bible is very clear. It only gives you one place in all of Scripture to be that God commands you to look at an allegory. Only one time. He doesn't tell you to continue it anywhere else. You don't find it anywhere else in Scripture. So what does the ministers of righteousness of Satan do? 
exactly what Satan wants them to do. They become part of a religion that is man-founded, that is based by Satan's teachings. A false religion called Christianity, presenting a false Jesus Christ of Christianity that's telling you through the ministers of righteousness like Dines D'Souza, it's okay to read scripture two ways. It's imperative because if you read scripture allegorically speaking, and you put a story to everything that's literal, you can come up with just about anything you want to promote your ideologies to make up your doctrine. And that's exactly what Christianity has done to include all the denominations of Christianity, to include Catholicism, which Dines D'Souza is a huge part of. They have outlandish things called purgatory. I never listened once in, in, in his presentations where this great scholar of Italian descent ever gave Jesus Christ any credit for anything. It's all because of mankind, what they have to do, see, for their salvation. They have to endure. It's not the cross didn't finish everything for them. They have to go to purgatory. And if you waited on God, you're gonna, if you waited and you put God off all your life, you're going to have to wait on God to get you into purgatory. Because you made God wait, he's going to make you wait. That is this man's analogy of it. This highly educated, world-renowned speaker, world traveler that has talked on so many different issues, is very heavily involved in politics, is very heavily involved in religion and things of the world. And naturally, that will lead him right to where he's at. His teachings, his presentations will show you something that is not even scriptural. You have to follow religion. You have to work for your salvation, see? You have to defend your beliefs. You have to be able to tell a story about every verse in Scripture when you read it. You do not just take the Bible literally, because if you take the Bible literally at what God said, it was what God meant, he said, when he wrote it, you're not finishing the story. You're only half done. See? You have to put a story to it because your Christianity, your religion, your denomination, your Christianity tells you, the Jesus Christ of Christianity tells you, you need to do this allegorically. To fully understand it, then it makes total sense. That way, you can apply anything you want to it to make it applicable for you today in your religion. That's what's being promoted, and it is so sad to see because this man is very smooth. This man is highly educated. This man is well esteemed, held in high esteem amongst many. He's got millions of followers, he gets millions of views and thousands of comments for what he presents. And then he does studies like this and people are responding by saying, oh, I'm so enlightened by your reviewing of what we really need to do to understand our relationship with God. And he promotes that. He promotes you have to study the word of God literally and allegorically read it in order to have a full, complete understanding or relationship with God. See, God can't do it on his own. See, God doesn't have the ability to create this relationship between you and me by going to the cross, dying for our sins, offering us salvation by faith through grace. That's not enough. You have to do all these other things to help God out, see. And you do it through your religion. You do it through debating. You do it through all these things that aren't scriptural, that scriptural warns you about, which I presented to you so far. Yet he continues down this path to lead you through the wide gate and down this path, broad path that will lead you to your destruction. When you follow people like this, those that are fair speech, these are the kind of people that if you take your Bibles, ladies and gentlemen, let's open our Bibles to um, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and let's read what it says. I believe it's verse 14. Here's what it says. Just to give you a little backdrop, what uh, Paul writes about here about Jesus Christ is the unity of the Spirit of God. Then he tells why we were given certain gifts in order to make us complete in Christ. And he says, all these gifts, and I'll start in verse 12. Verse 12 says, all these gifts were given that were mentioned in verse 11. Verse 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come in unity of the truth and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or complete man, unto the meaning of the statue of the fullness of Christ, 
But see now, Dines and Souza can't read this and just leave it the way it literally says it is. He has to do allegorical stuff to study what it is in a story sense that he can make it sense, that he can tell you what it means in your life today. Because he is part of verse 14. Verse 14 says, There we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, it's amazing when you listen to somebody like Dinesh D'Souza and you say, how in the name of everything is decent can this man be the way he is and promote what he is, he is promoting? If you are a student of the Word of God, if you, teach, if you let Jesus Christ of the Bible teach you the Word of God by comparing spiritual things by spiritual, let Scripture teach you and leave mankind out of the equation, you'll understand fully well why he is like he is. Dinesh D'Souza is a lost human being. He thinks he's saved by the grace of God, according to his religion, according to his allegorical study of Scripture and his literal sense of Scripture. He understands it more than you do, see, because he, he's able to understand both of them because he studies it from both ends. He just doesn't look at it from a literal sense. And I had one message that I left him when I uh, commented on his uh, site. And I told him about how the well, God could use the simple to confound the wise. And it's very interesting because what is written in chapter 3 of the book of Corinthians. This is what it says. Verse, and we'll start in verse 18. Let no man deceive himself, Dinesh D'Souza. If any man amongst you seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool, so that he may be wise. Verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And verse 20, And again, I, the Lord, knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. Dinesh D'Souza, your whole life, your whole educational intellect, Everything you stood for, everything you wrote about, everything you talked about, everything that you practiced, preach and tell other people and believe in is vain in the eyes of God. That's not what I'm telling you. It's what the word of God from Jesus Christ of the Bible is telling you. Now, let me warn you, Dinesh D'Souza, there's no debating this. This book is without controversy. The mystery of godliness is without controversy. God is manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, believed on into the world. Really exposed to the Gentiles, believed onto the world, and received up into glory. That's First Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. I should say he was preached unto the Gentiles. I don't want to leave an important part out. That's why it's without controversy. There's no confusion with Jesus Christ. With you, there is confusion. Why? You have to debate. You have to be an apologist. There's argument. Why? Because you have to debate and be an apologist. There's controversy. Why? Because you have to be an apologist and you have to defend the word of God. Do you see the difference? They're split. Why? Because you belong to Catholicism and there's over 1,200 denominations within this world. So you have to be a debater and you have to be an apologist for your religion called Christianity and you being a Christian. There's no unity in your religion of Christianity. Why? Because you have to debate it and you are an apologist for it. There's no need if you have full unity within the Jesus Christ of Scripture, within the unity of the body of Christ Church, which is not of this world, your church is of this world. And look at where it's at. Look where you're at with it. It's very easy to see when you are a student of the Word of God and you believe what it is you read because Jesus Christ is teaching you through his Scripture of what he said is what he meant, is what he wrote. He gives you permission in certain places to do certain things. In fact, he gives you permission of how you should study his word and why you should study his word. That's found in 2 uh, Tim Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study. So that's what we do in his word. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How? Rightly dividing the word of truth. The nest of Susa, you have no clue what that is. You can't even put up an allegory against that. You'd fail. Yet God is so clear. There's no need. And he gives us only one place in all of Scripture where we can use an allegory 
because it's presented as an allegory to us in the first place. We don't have to come up with an allegorical way of reading that verses. Do you understand what I'm saying, Ganesh D'Souza? It's already laid out as an allegoric process to us from God himself, not from people like you and not from this Dante person that you hold in such high esteem, that you've done a literal many, many videos on documentaries of this great Italian poet and philosopher of the 13th century. Good luck to you, my friend. But that's what you find, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's out there when you look at the ministers of righteousness of Satan, how clever they are, how smooth they are. They can be so convincing, they can be so mesmerizing and get you to believe what it is they're promoting. Because they believe it is what they're promoting because of Satan. They're held captive by him. They have been deceiving people so long. These people, like Dinesh D'Souza, have become completely deceived themselves. That's scriptural also. And that's fallen under the category, ladies and gentlemen, of evil doers. Did you realize that? It's of evil doers that find themselves in that kind of situation. And it's a very, very scary place to be. And as soon as I find it here in Scripture, I will give it to you. And open your Bibles to 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 3. Because this is what it says. First of all, I'm going to read you verse 13. It tells you, we that stand for the truth of God in his word and defend the Jesus Christ of the Bible, telling you Christianity is a false religion, we're going to be persecuted. Verse 13, 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus, shall suffer persecution. Here's Dinesh D'Souza and all of the false ministers of righteousness of Satan fall under. Verse 13, but evil men, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and becoming and being deceived. Why? Because he's lost. How do we know that? Well, let's just the scripture tell you that because you need the verses. Go to 2 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, and I start in verse 3. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 3 says, But if our gospel be hid, that is grace through faith, finished the work of the cross of Jesus Christ, it is hid to them that are lost. Those that are lost will promote what? An ideology of mankind, an ideology of Christianity, an ideology of Jesus Christ of Christianity, an ideology and a doctrine founded by Satan, and is presented by his ministers of righteousness since he's become the angel of light in this age of grace that we now live in. With their lost. Why? Verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, Dines de Souza, your mind is blinded by God or excuse me, the God of this world, who is Satan. Why is it blinded? Because you're taken captive by him. You'll deny that. I would like to see how you would use debating and apologetics and an allegory to get away from what the Bible literally says. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 2. And let's look at verses 25 and 26. In 25, it says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, in Esther Susa, you oppose yourself. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, what does Dines de Souza need? He needs God to preadventure give him the repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth because the truth that he thinks he has is a pseudo truth that is brought on by Satan because Dines de Souza is opposing himself. Why? Verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. <clears throat> Yet this man, <coughs> excuse me, promotes this false ideology, this false teaching, this wrong doctrine. And if you, if he promotes reading the Bible both literally and allegorically, that is false doctrine. That isn't even in Scripture. Only time you do the Word of God is the way God commands you to do it, whether you study, read, or whatever. You never do it on your own. You never do it by your religion, but everybody does, don't they? 
I've heard so many people say, well, that might mean that to you, but it doesn't mean that to me. And it used to frustrate me at first when I'd hear this. Because how, I want to ask them, how in the name of everything is decent, what I just read to you, how can it mean something different to you when it, it says exactly what it means? How can you come up with something else? And that's Satan, ladies and gentlemen. And that's because people listen to people like Dinesh D'Souza and their fi false ideology, their false doctrine, if you will, their false teachings. There is no way, according to the Jesus Christ of Scripture and the Jesus Christ of the Bible, as he teaches us how and why we should study his word by comparing spiritual things with spiritual, once we are saved by grace through faith, and our spiritual eyes and minds are open, we're not captive by Satan anymore. Dinesh D'Souza has not salvation. He has a false salvation. He has something that will lead him right to hell and eventually the lake of fire. Oh, he's going to find a purgatory, all right, that's going to be permanent. Isn't that ironic? He promotes a pur uh, purgatory as a positional thing that is temporary, to be refined to uh, because you're just not complete. You see, he's promoting self-awareness. He's promoting self-help. He's promoting people doing things for their salvation. And that's what Catholicism is 90% about. It's 10% of scripture, which they twist and pervert anyway, and it's 90% traditions of their church, which he is a part of. And that's the dangers, and that is the damnation they will face. Because they're out there promoting this kind of thing, and people listen, and people buy into this, and people will share this and tell other people about it to listen to it, not in warning. I'm telling you to check it out with your Bible open and keep an open mind. And don't get sucked, excuse me, sucked in by the ministers of righteousness, which are of Satan in this age of grace today. Any minister out there that claims to be a minister of righteousness, ladies and gentlemen, today is a minister of righteousness of Satan, not of the Bible. Did you know that? Now, where do we get this minister of righteousness stuff? Where do we see this? Well, let's take our Bibles. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. And in 2 Corinthians, you're going to read something that probably some of you might be hearing for the first time. I hope not. But again, it's a possibility. If we go to chapter 11, I believe it is, ladies and gentlemen, in 2 Corinthians. And I'll get there sooner or later. I may not be good, but I'm slow. In chapter 11, it talks about, first of all, these false apostles, deceitful workers. Let's start in verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming them into the apostles of Christ. Voila. Who's an example of Dinesh D'Souza? Look at verse 13. Or excuse me, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, which he is now. Look at verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Oh yes, their ends will come. They may go through this life, gathering a flock of people and opening the wide gate and taking them down the broad path leads to destruction with them, thinking they're doing the right thing because they're following a false god. They're following the one that transformed himself into the angel of light, telling them, I am the Jesus Christ of Christianity. This is what you need to do. They forget that the serpent today has a bite that is deadly, but it comes on slowly. It is an instantaneous one. It permeates. It takes its time. It develops over time. And they end up deceiving so many over such a long period of time with the evil works that they represent that they become deceived themselves. They tell a lie. They live a lie, they preach a lie, they believe a lie, they become the lie. And that's what Dines de Souza is on his way to doing. Is there any hope for him? Sure there is. Will he ever see it? I have no clue. He's made his personal choice the way it looks right now. He's very successful. He's worth millions. Why would he change what he's doing? He's very well accepted in this world, see? He's very well renowned in this world. He's very well highly esteemed in this world. 
Why in the world would you become somebody like me that would sit there and make a video and tell the world he's a deceitful worker, that he's a minister of righteousness of Satan, leading you down the path of destruction to hell if you follow his teachings. And he promotes it from the very start of his video presentations that he's done on this series of Dante's practices that he promotes, reading the Bible literally and also allegorically. There's two sides to all of this for him, see. There's Jesus Christ's side and there's Satan's side. Let's combine the two and call it Christianity. And let's become Christians and let's follow the teachings of Christianity and the great leaders of Christianity in the past, the great ministers of righteousness of Satan from the past. Let's follow them up until the present, see. And everything will be just honky-dory, for lack of a fancy term, Dinesh D'Souza. Use your fancy words. Be very polished in your presentations. Because what you're polishing, in the end, is not going to shine as brightly as you think it is. In fact, it's going to create such a flame that you will be unable to ever escape from it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be free from this nonsense. You can be freed from this angel of light that promotes himself in this age of grace that we live in today called Satan. We, you can be freed from the ministers of his righteousness, which is teaching a false religion, a false message, false doctrine, false salvation. You do not have to be part of this. You just get mankind out of the way. And you let Jesus Christ of Scripture, Jesus Christ of the Bible, who is freed from religion, teach you his word, which is his literal word. And he tells you only one place in this whole Bible where you can look at something as an allegory. That is it. And that's the only place you do. The rest of it's all literal. It means what it says, and it says what it means, where it says it, when it says it, and to whom it says it to. And you leave it at that. You get your finite mind and your finite wisdom out of the way because you can do nothing for your salvation. Why in the world would you want to listen to mankind telling you what you need to do for your salvation in the first place? You can be free from this. You can find the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you from this mess and from this destruction. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which is preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, 4, I live it first of all unto you that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now Paul writes this, and you take it by faith and faith alone, because it's by grace you are saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Where in everything that's decent are you going to come up with an allegory for that, Dinesh D'Souza? When are you going to tell your followers there's an allegory for every verse in Scripture? Is there an allegory for grace? That you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves? And the next one says not of works. And you're telling your followers you need to work for your salvation. You need to participate because the cross didn't finish it all, you see? You need to go to purgatory. You need to be purged. You need to be made a better self to atone for your sins that you've done in the past. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I thought that's what the cross was for. What are you doing with the cross? You are denying the very salvation that Jesus Christ died in the cross to give you. You're denying. You're coming up with your own way to salvation. And that's what Catholicism did. And that's what all these denominations do when they mix a law and grace. Every one of them, even your non-denominations, your Christianity is full of law and grace. And it's full of lost believers, destined for hell and the lake of fire, no matter how you slice it. You can be free from all this, ladies and gentlemen. And I may continue to expose many more ministers of righteousness of Satan as time goes on. I'll be bold. I am not afraid. For I stand for the truth of God. In Jesus Christ of the Bible. And yes, I believe everything I read is what Jesus Christ said, and I leave it at that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you, and I'll always remember if there is a next time, make it the best of times.